Hi everyone. So, next important topic from your anatomy is the temporomandibular joint which is very important for your basics paper. Okay, so let us discuss myself Dr. Saiti, team MDS Conquer. So, any essay question, so usually TMJ is given as an essay. So, if it is an essay question then you have to write the contents. So, either you can write the contents first and then you can write the answer or else you can leave some space, write the descriptive part of the answer and then write the contents. Okay, so based on your length of your answer you can write the contents. So, it exactly uh, actually attracts the examiner if the contents are very clear. Okay, so vice versa you can do this way or that way it is up to you. Okay, so, these are the contents that you need to put in, in on your paper. So, that includes the introduction, the development, the innovation and the blood supply, the components of the joint and components of the muscles, the jaw movements, examination in various imaging modalities, the disorders followed by the conclusion and the references. So, these contents you have to put in for sure. So, introduction you can give it is a very important joint for the movement of the jaws. Okay, so, it is the joint uh, is a where the bones get connected to each other and it is constructed to allow the movement as well as to provide the mechanical support. Okay. So, next coming to the important uh, introduction for the temporomandibular joint. So, it is actually called as a inglimoathroidal joint. Why so? Because it provides a hinging movement in one plane that is the reason it is called as ginglimoid joint and at the same time it also provides a gliding movement. So, which classifies it as a athroidal joint. So, that is the reason it is called as a ginglimoathroidal joint. Okay, So, you have to write this for sure and you have to underline that. So, coming to the development, so Meckel's cartilage, the cartilage of the first starch fi actually functions as a primary joint, uh, jaw joint. Okay. Later, the incus and the malleus of the middle ear are derived from the dorsal end and the ventral part of this cartilage which is surrounded by the developing mandible. So, the formation actually occurs in the 12 weeks in the utero where the joint spaces and the articular disc actually start to develop and at approximately 10 weeks, the feet this future component of the joint becomes evident in the mesenchyma between the condylar cartilage of the mandible as well as the developing temporal bone. So, this is how you have to write the development related to TMJ. Okay. So, the first evidence is actually it is divided or it is given as a two distinct regions or uh, which is uh, related to the mesenchymal con condensation that includes the temporal and the condylar blastoma. So, little introduction of the development is enough. Next, you have to write the blood supply of that. So, all the blood arteries which supply the TMJ include these arteries. So, you have to write, okay. So, they are actually the branches of the external carotid artery, predominantly the superficial temporal branch. So, and the other branches include these. So, this branch you have to mention and the other branches also you have to write. If possible, if you can draw this diagram, Okay, it's good. So you can you have can draw the TMJ joint along with the articular disc and the uh, fossa, glenoid fossa, and you can draw these diagrams like the maxillary artery, tympanic artery, showing the arteries posterior auricular, deep auricular artery. So you can just show arteries. It's not mandatory. If you can, it's better you draw. Then coming to the nerve supply. So the mandibular nerve actually uh, provide the efferent innovation. Additionally. It is also provided by the deep ventoral as well as a masseteric. Okay, most of the innervation is actually provided by the auriculotemporal nerve. Okay, so the mandibular nerve, auriculotemporal nerve, you have to write. Next, coming to the main anatomy. So we have given a mild description or a small description, brief description of the development followed by the blood supply and the nerve supply. Now coming to the main anatomy of the joint of how it looks. So, it has actually have the hard components and the soft tissue components. So, the first is the condylar head. You can write the dimensions as shown in this picture. You can write, you can draw and you can give the dimensions. And then you can also next you have to write the fossa. So, it is located where it is located exactly. It is the inferior part of the squamous part of the temporal bone which is composed of the articular eminence at the anterior limit and the glenoid fossa. So, you have to write like this. Next coming to the soft tissue components which include the articular surfaces, the articular disc and the ligaments. So, first you have to write the heart tissue which includes the fossa as well as the condyle 
condyla head then you have to come to the soft tissues which include these articular surfaces the disc and the ligaments so articular surfaces the upper articular surface is actually formed by the eminence the articular eminence and the anterior part of the fossa whereas lower articular surface is formed by the head of the mandible it's very simple okay next articular disc you have to highlight short answer can also be asked on articular disc okay you have to draw a beautiful diagram and you can color the articular disc and showing the articular disc as shown in this picture this picture is very easy to draw as you can see you can draw this showing the articular disc okay so the unique feature of the tmj is the it's it's articular disc okay it is actually avascular in the center okay whereas the peripheral portion is vascular and thicker the center area is thin and it is avascular okay the this functions at the articular disc against the temporal bone as well as the mandible and it's usually 10 mm in antero posterior and 20 mm in medial lateral dimension so all this you have to put in okay next coming to the attachments of the disc so posteriorly it is attached by a retro discal tissue it is uh, highly vascularized and innervated and it's also called as bilamina zone because it has superior retrodiscal lamina and inferior retrodiscal lamina as you can see in the picture so it's also called as a bilamina zone so you can write this next coming to the attachment anteriorly posterior attachments you have written the retrodiscal tissue and next coming to the anteriorly so the superior and inferior attachments of the anterior region of the disc are to the capsular ligament which surrounds the most of the joint so anteriorly it is to the capsular ligament and between this attachments the disc is also attached to the lateral pterygoid muscle okay so that you have to mention so if a question is asked again on the disc little description of the joint and the disc description and its attachments are very important okay the posterior as well as the anterior attachments so next coming to the capsule or the joint capsule so it is completely in a capsule the tmj is surrounded by a beautiful capsule okay superiorly that is again attached to the circumference of the mandibular fossa anteriorly to the articular eminence and again inferiorly up to the mandibular or the condylar neck as you can see so inferiorly it's to the neck and superiorly it is to the fossa anteriorly it is to the articular eminence as you can see okay so that's it so again next important concept is the synovial fluid so it actually divides the joint into two distinct cavities its upper or the superior cavity and the lower cavity so the upper is again by the disc and the mandibular fossa superior surface of the disc and the mandibular fossa lower is by the condyle and the inferior surface of the disc quite simple so this is again surrounded by synovial lining so what is the important functions of this synovial fluid it acts as a lubricant okay the boundary lubricant and the weeping lubricant so boundary lubrication is to prevent the friction between the moving joint and it's a primary mechanism of the joint lubrication whereas weeping lubrication helps in uh, eliminating the friction in the compressed but not in the moving joint so you have to write this okay next coming to the ligaments so we have written the hard tissue components and the soft tissue components we have written the articular surfaces and then we have gone to the articular disc its attachments okay and then also then we have come to the ligaments part okay so coming to the ligaments there are mainly uh, three functional ligaments and two accessory ligaments so again you have to draw a diagram showing the ligaments as shown here okay the diagram is very important the three functional ligaments include the collateral the capsular and the temporomandibular ligament whereas accessory includes the stylomandibular and the spinomandibular so the collateral ligaments attach the medial and the lateral poles of the articular disc to the poles of the condyle these are also called as a discal ligament so medial discal ligament and the lateral discal ligament okay they are actually true ligaments which is composed of the collagenous connective tissue and they usually do not stretch okay they are responsible for the hinging movement of the tmj next is a capsular ligament so it is attached above to the articular tubercle around the circumference of the fossa and the squamotympanic fissure and below to the mandibular neck or the neck of the mandible as you can see in the picture so this diagram if you draw it will be really fetching 
So, as I said this diagram showing the ligaments you can draw it is taken from the occasion textbook which is especially given for the TMJ joint. So, the, this is the articular disc, this is the condyle and this is your glenoid fossa or the mandibular fossa ok. So, uh, here you can see the medial and the lateral discal ligaments or the uh, collateral ligaments and these two are the capsular ligaments ok. So, you can show like this. Okay, so this is uh, the sorry. So the medial and the lateral ligaments, you can see the lines which are there. Okay, so these are the medial and the lateral discal ligaments, whereas uh, uh, this one is the collateral uh, sorry capsular ligament. Okay. So, you have to draw accordingly as per the label given do draw this diagram, the diagrams are very much fetching, fetching to answer and to for the marks to score ok. Next coming to the temporomandibular ligament, so it has a inner horizontal portion and the outer oblique portion. So, the outer oblique portion actually resists the excessive drooping of the condyle therefore limiting the extent of the mouth opening whereas the inner horizontal portion actually limits the lateral pterygoid muscle from over lengthening. So, you can draw this diagram as well especially the ligaments question if it is asked you have to draw individual diagrams or else for the 20 marks or for the essay question if they ask if you draw the diagrams for all the ligaments then it is really fetching for you. Then coming to the accessory ligaments that is stylomandibular and the spinomandibular you can draw this diagram and you can just mention them that is enough. Coming to the various muscles, so the muscles you know the tempora, temporalis, masseter, lateral pterygoid and medial pterygoid. So, again a separate presentation will be made on muscles of mastication. So, here if it is a essay question is being asked you have to mention the muscles of mastication along with the origin and the insertion and the functions. If you can mention it will be really useful. So, that separate presentation is being made we will discuss there for the muscles of mastication ok. Next coming to the jaw movements. So, he till now we have given the clear cut idea of the anatomy of the TMJ along with the muscles of mastication ok. It includes the hard and soft tissues ok, the articular surface, the articular disc and the important ligaments along with the diagrams and also the muscles of mastication, the origin, the insertion and the function. So, here with we have completed the main answer or the main core of the answer. Next the accessory things you have can give the jaw movements ok. So, first there is a hinge movement or the rotational movement by which the condyle actually rotates around the glenoid fossa then followed by the gleaning, uh, gliding movement or the transnational movement. So, if a person wants to open the mouth from a rest uh, or from occlusion position to the rest position then first the condyle rotates ok within the fossa it rotates later if he wants to open the mouth widely it glides over the articular remnant so that the person can open the mouth open the mouth widely this is the important moments related to the tmj so the normal uh, mouth opening is around 40 to 50 mm okay uh, being measured from the edge of the lower front teeth and the edge of the upper front teeth ok these are the various functions it uses for elevation depression of the jaws and also protrusion and retrusion and also for the exertion movements and the lateral movements. So, these are the important movements and functions given by the TMJ. So, next coming to the clinical examination just brief description of the functions of the TMJ is enough what is the hinge movement and what is the glide movement and the little description that is enough. Next coming to the history we have to ask the patient whether he is having pain, whether he is having tenderness in the muscles, whether he is able to open the mouth frequently or uh, sorry widely or not, any frequent headaches and toothaches and any uh, injuries or any history of trauma and any changes in his bite. So, all this detailed history you need to take followed by which you can do uh, inspection by measuring the uh, opening with comfort and without comfort or like with pain or without pain ok and also the maximum lateral and protrusive movement should also be inspected. Later you have to make a diagnosis based on the Laskin's diagnostic criteria. This you have to mention students it is very useful for scoring point of view. So, the Laskin has given a diagnostic criteria. So, it has two four, four sorry four cardinal signs and two negative characteristics. So, the four cardinal signs which denote there is a TMJ disorder is a unilateral pain, the muscle tenderness 
the clicking or the popping noise in the TMJ and limitation in the jaw movement. Whereas negative characteristics include there is no radiographic evidence and there is no uh, tenderness in the TMJ on palpation via external auditory meatus. So, this Laskin's criteria diagnostic criteria irrespective of your department if you write it is really fetching for you. So, next coming to the uh, deviation and deflection you have to write. So, deviation, so on wide opening again the mouth will come back to its normal position whereas in deflection it stays back in a deviated or a deflected position. So, it deviates from the midline and it stays like that, that is the major difference. So, you know how to palpate and auscultate the both intraauricular and the extraauricular methods of the TMJ, you have to mention them and the provocation test like the examiner is asked to apply pressure against resistance. So, the patient is asked to open the mouth widely against resistance. So, how far he can open with pain and without pain or with comfort and dis without discomfort is being measured. That is called as a static pain test. Okay, so, here the manual force is actually applied lateral upward and downward direction. Okay, so, this if you write it is okay or else you can leave it. Next intraauricular examination you have to see for all these, you have to see for any history of cheek, uh, cheek or uh, cheek or lip biting, attenuated linea alba, any scallop tongue or uh, borders, occlusal wear, tooth mobility and all these. So, you have to look for the intraoral examination as well. Next uh, various TMJ imaging modalities you can write just the names you can write. If it is an oral medicine student if you can give little bit description of the imaging modalities it will be useful for you. So, these are the various imaging modalities, but for the uh, articular disc to uh, observe MRI is more useful ok, because MRI is especially it gives a detailed of the articular disc or the soft tissue part. So, MRI is more useful, so you can mention this. So, for observing the articular disc MRI is more useful. So, next the diagnostic LA nerve blocks also you can give and the various disorders, the classification you can give like intra auricular or intrinsic and extrinsic disorders. Again you can give this uh, in, uh, disorders and you can give this classification as an applied aspect ok. You can give a heading as applied aspects and you can give related disorders due to intrinsic as well as extrinsic. So, these are the various intrinsic factors as you can see ok. So, you can just note it down and these are the other uh, factors, intrinsic factors which are broadly classified as all these. Then extrinsic include the uh, masticatory muscle disorders also from the trauma like myositis, tendonitis, uh, internal disc derangement and all this ok. Next inflammatory joint disorders include the inflammation of the synovial membrane or the synovial lining or the capsulitis or even the or that is inflammation of the capsule or the retrodiscitis which is the inflammation of the retrodiscal tissue ok. So, again you can give a brief introduction of the ankylosis where is an abnormal immobility of the joint ok that again you can if you know you can give a mild description of the causes and the main signs and symptoms of ankylosis that is it and the relation between the teeth and the joints at the end you can give. So, which includes like the any habits like the clenching of the teeth or bruxism. So, that is again related to any TMJ disorder that you can end like that. So, you can finally conclude. So, this is how you have to write the answer students. So, first you have to give a mild introduction or a, a simple brief introduction of the joint and the glenglymoathroidal joint. Later you have to give the blood and nerve supply followed by and also the development of TMJ followed by the hard and soft tissue components of the TMJ. You have to de give detailed description of that followed by the muscles of mastication and the various TMJ movements the hinge movement, the gliding movement and the functions of the TMJ followed by the clinical examination that is inspection and palpation and the static provocation test again followed by the disorders and the applied aspects. So, for if it is oral medicine student you can give a detailed description of the imaging aspects as well ok. This is how you have to write the exam answer in your exam for the anatomy part of uh, point of view for the TMJ. Ok, and these are the various references that you can put in. So, the must and the if a TMJ question comes, do write this reference that is occasion. Occasion is a specific textbook 
for the management of the TMJ disorders. So Kaysen do write that. Apart from that, your Chaurashya, your development book for in the basing and the bucket. Okay, you can write that and any articles if you can, you can write. So as shown here, you can put forward any articles if you 